Hey folks, Jason Dukes, Dirt Race Life. In this video, we're gonna talk about tire stagger. What it is, how it works, how do we determine whether we need more or less of it. But more importantly, we're gonna cover its relationship with our scale numbers and our left rear bite. And if that's a piece of the puzzle that you've been leaving out of your racing program, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around. things first let's talk about the basics stagger is the difference in the circumferences of the tires on your race car circumference is the distance around your tire I like to use a small tape measure this is three three quarter inch wide any wider than three quarters of an inch and it's not going to want to follow the contour well around the tire I bend the end I put a crook in it so and sharpen it where that it'll stay hooked onto the tires even if they have wear on them or that that'll stay hooked but if you're measuring for like carpentry and stuff that hook would make your measurement be wrong for measuring tires it doesn't matter because we're coming all the way back around and then we're measuring back against the tape measure and so i'm measuring to that top anyway and it stays accurate so take tape measure i hook in to the tread i try to be right on the crown all right, so on the center tread or whatever tire tire you got in the center, I come around all the way, stay in the middle. I try not to weave back and forth with the tape measure. That's going to add length to it. And so then I just take them where they cross over each other. I'm 87 and 5 eighths is what this tire is. Okay, so let's talk about Stagger's relationship to the track. All right, so I'm just going to draw... And forgive me, I'm not an artist. But I'm gonna draw a big racetrack here. And the track will have an inside, a set of ute tires or something going on here, whether it be an inside wall or tires or something, but you'll have an inside edge limit. And I'm gonna draw a typical scenario. Like for me, uh, most tracks feature time, if they've slicked off and, and gotten black, um, a lot of times your fastest line will be really close to the inside uh, wall in the turn and then out toward the edge down the straightaway and then back toward this inside and out toward the edge. So this fastest line a lot of times ends up like this for a lot of tracks I race at in the feature. So what you're trying to do is you're basically rounding the track out, all right? And so you say, well, how much stagger do I need? Stagger is that difference between the left rear and the right rear. A lot of people talk about, they'll say, well, it's like using a cup. They'll use this as an example, how you, you're large on one side and you're small on the other. And they'll talk about how when you roll that on a table or on the ground, it turns. Well, that's what stagger is on the car, that the rear axle is locked together. Okay, so you've got, since you have positive traction and your rear axle is locked together, you need to have that, that inside tire smaller for it to turn. And so you're looking for that perfect mix where that the car is turning through this center and off of this turn well. So when you apply a throttle, you want that, that difference in the two tires to help you follow that line that you want to be on and apply even in, you know power out if you have too much stagger you're going to scrub off speed down the straightaway if you have too little stagger you're going to scrub off speed in the turn and so what you're looking for is you're looking for that balance that is enough for you to be able to power off the turn but not too much to get through the straightaway Good rule of thumb here is if you've got a track that you're rounding out, it's a big smooth oval track, that's gonna like more stagger because you're constantly turning the car. And if you have a track that is more of what I'd call a paper clip, where that you're you're coming off of the turn and you know you're you're coming off of this turn and then you're drag racing down the straightaway. You're breaking the car down and like completely changing the direction of the car. Um, that's going to like less stagger. And then another situation that you'll end up running less stagger, or if you don't have enough stagger in your car and you're stuck with it in a feature, is in a situation to where 
you're diamonding the track because basically you're breaking the car down stopping it and changing the direction of it and then taking back off and so that's where stagger becomes irrelevant as well is in a situation to where you're diamonding the track now with that said then the question is well what's you know what's the range of stagger how much is is too much what's too little and here's a rule of thumb from my experience i've never seen a street stock were that it was good to have less than one inch of stagger or more than four inches of stagger. So my window for what I consider to be a range of stagger, again, difference between left rear and right rear circumference of the tires is from one to four inches. That's not to say that there are not people who are running cars with more or less than that that are not being successful. I guarantee you there are people out there being successful outside of that envelope. They've got other things going on in their setup that either make that work or it's compensating for other issues and working well because of it. Um, regardless, you know, for me, one to four inches. How do you know if you have too little or too much? Uh, let's talk about that. A good rule of thumb is people say you use bite to get in a turn, you use stagger to get off the turn. Okay, so that's that's kind of slang, but there's actually some truth to it. When I'm coming around this turn, I enter. If I'm entering this turn well, and I'm coming through the center, and right in here, I'm trying to pick my throttle up. If when I pick my throttle up, I'm pointing my car down this straightaway. And I'm finding instead of taking this line that I'm struggling and I'm wanting to take this line here, the car's pushing out on me on the throttle. So I'm picking my throttle up, I'm trying to head here, and if I stay in the throttle, I can grab the steering over, but what's happening is, is my car's drifting out on me. So I'm just, I'm sliding over. And, and you'll know, when you race, you'll know this effect where you're holding, you're putting some angle into the wheel, that's where it helps, really helps to have a camera in your car and have a piece of tape on your steering wheel. You know, are you holding the wheel over on the car and the car is just steadily drifting out of the wall? Because if you're shooting for this line, but it's putting you here, it might look right from a spectator standpoint, but this difference between the two is scrubbing speed off is what it is. If you're trying to go here, you need to be steering here. You don't need to be steering over here. In this case, I would say you don't have enough stagger because you've got good forward bite coming off. That forward bite, as you're picking the throttle up, it's driving, it's steering the car, all right? So it's overpowering your front end to a certain extent. You'll start scrubbing your front wheels. Um, so you got good, strong forward bite, but you've got, you don't have enough stagger and the car is driving out on you. So you can't steer the car well. You're, you're scrubbing speed off. All right, that's the scenario. Now let's talk about not enough stagger, okay? So let's take this same deal, okay? We're coming around the turn, and here we come. And as I come out, the car goes where I want it to go, all right? And this is all assuming a good setup. And remember, recipe, lots of ingredients. So if you've got something else wrong, this can get really complicated. We gotta keep it simple just for the discussion. The car goes where I want it, but it's crabbing on me. So for example, let's say I'm headed here and this is my line. Well, I may be able to make it stay on that line, but it's driving crabbed. I've got the car, I have the steering turned back to the right outside. So instead of the car being pointed in that direction, it is pointed over here, okay? So it's pointed in this direction, I come off, but that's like, man, I got no forward drive. But what it is, is it's an illusion. The car's crabbing on them. They're, they're coming off that turn and they're hammered down and they're hooked up, but they got that wheel kicked back to the right slightly and they're stepping on the throttle and the car is moving forward. They got forward bite, but they're scrubbing, again, scrubbing speed off. It's a stagger issue. In this case, I would say they have too much stagger. 
and it can get really complicated and you got to stay on top of your game and here's why and this is a warning of caution it's not this simple from a standpoint of well i'm like this or i'm, I'm truly you know i'm crabbed off and my car is spinning and so i'm not hooking up my back tires aren't hooking up at all and you say, well, I just have too much stagger in it. And in reality, you don't have enough forward drive because you are spinning it. So you have to look at it, and I'm gonna say holistically. You need to look at your, you know, your tack. Use a telltale tack, uh, a memory recall or something. You know, are you blowing the tires off of it? Use a camera, look and see which way you're turning the steering wheel and everything. Because this scenario, you would know you're hooked up, but still doing this. And so you have to identify the different parts of the failure, okay? So you've been warned, it's, it's not easy um, until you get to a point where you can dissect it down to this level. Okay, so, so far we've been talking about the exit off. That is really the biggest part for the stagger, but there is a relationship with entry as well. And the biggest way that it affects our entry is when we change stagger, we're changing what our left rear bite and our scale numbers are. And because we're doing that, we're changing how much that left rear versus that right rear tire is dragging when we decelerate and turning us in. And it's twofold. And so you think about it. As this left rear tire gets smaller, it's going to make the car turn more to the left. So if you think about it, if I have more stagger in the car, it's gonna make the car turn more inward. Um, as I let off, it's gonna turn the car in. Um, and so that's an effect, but as well, um, it's reducing my amount of bite as my stagger increases on the rear of the car. And from that standpoint, let's jump over here and talk about scale numbers. And now I've got this Camaro sitting on the scales right now. And this is with no driver in it. So these are very low bike numbers because I'm not in the car. But where it's sitting at right now is it has 784 total weight on the left rear and 772 total weight on the right rear. And so right now it has got 12 pounds of left rear bike in the car. Of course, obviously that number is going to be much higher whenever I climb into the car. But as far as for what we're doing, it's 12 pounds in the car right now. All right. And I've got an 84 and 1 8 um, tire on the left rear. Okay. So let's imagine typically like a lot of people will race and they will run the feature or they'll run a heat race when the track's heavier and they'll run with um, a smaller left rear tire. And then they'll turn around and they'll say, let's take some stagger out of the car for the feature. The track's slicking off, let's take stagger out of the car. I understand completely the thought process going into that, but let's look at what that's doing to our scale numbers, okay? So I have um, a tire that is 87 and 5 eighths of an inch. And so we're gonna keep the 87 and an eighth or seven eight, excuse me, here. And so we're gonna go from three and three quarters down to a quarter inch, just a quarter inch. All right, so let's swap those out and, uh, and see what that looks like on the scale. All right. Between these two tires is just the size of the tire itself. I've set both of them. I've set both of these tires to the same air pressure, and it's both got it's the same wheel, same offset on the wheel for both of these. So we are only changing the stagger and nothing else. Down good. 
So now that we've swapped them out, we look at our scales and we're only looking at our rear numbers to determine the left rear bite. And so now we are at 800 pounds on the left rear and we are at 758 pounds on the right rear. So now we've got a big change. Our bite number has increased now to 42 pounds. All right, so we went from 12 to 42. And so when you look at this, we went down on stagger, and I would never run a quarter inch, but I'm just, I'm showing a big swing here to show how that it's making a big swing in the scale numbers. Um, we went down on stagger three and a half inches, and that three and a half inch swing in stagger increased our bite by 30 pounds, all right? And from experience, I can tell you that so going down on stagger, increased the bite, three and a half inches, I changed it by 30 pounds. Um, that relationship between that, those two right there, for my car, in my experience, that is a linear relationship. So it, it, um, it's even. So for example, if I went half that much stagger, it would be about half that much bite. Like if, if I was to go like say, uh, an inch and three quarters difference on the stagger, I would expect to see around 15 pounds of bite. And I would expect that relationship to be that way on any street stock type of car. However, the amount it changes may be different. So that's one of these deals where you really should get your car on a set of scales, change the stagger and see what it's doing to your bite. Um, you may find that one inch changes your bite by 10 pounds. You may find that one inch changes it by 12, by 15, by eight, but check it, see what it does. Um, now, there's another important aspect of this that we need to talk about. Stagger in the front of the car, this setup here has one and an eighth inch of, of stagger in the front. When we start talking about how much stagger changes the bike and what the relationship is like on your car when you like go up or down an inch of stagger, how that changes the bike, the front end changing the stagger on the front tires will have that same effect, but in the opposite direction. So if we increase the stagger on the front of a car, we'll increase the bike instead of decreasing the bike. Um, and I have found for me in my experience, it is a similar relationship. What an inch in the rear would do, the inch in the front will do, but it does it in the opposite way. And we can use that to our advantage. And so let's redraw this a different way to just talk about that relationship. Let's draw this out here. We're gonna put four tires here on there. There is an inverse relationship between the front and the rear when it comes to scaling the car and cross weight and how bite works as well. All right, so I'm gonna put some symbols. I'm gonna put negatives for reduction, positives for increases here, talking about the rollout of the tires. If I reduce the size of the left rear, or increase the size of the right rear, that is going to reduce the amount of bite, okay? If I was to increase the size of the left rear or reduce the size of the right rear, that will increase bite, all right? So if I, the way to look at this is, is if I increase the stagger, if I increase my stagger, that's you know a reduction in the left rear or increase in the right rear, I'm reducing my bite. And if I reduce my stagger by making my left rear larger or my right rear smaller, I'm increasing my bite. Now let's look at the front tires. If I reduce the size of the left front or I increase the size of the right front, that is going to increase bite. It is an exact opposite relationship it is it's an inverse relationship now 
if I increase the size of the left front or I reduce the size of the right front, that is going to reduce bite. How do we use this to our advantage? Well, what we need to look at is these two are locked together with an axle. These two are freewheeling. And so now I need to be looking at this from a standpoint of I need to set my stagger for what I need for the car to drive off of the turn and then understand what that does to my bite and correct for it. And so you look at it and you say, well, if your car had weight jacks on it or adjustable cups, you put it on the scales, you change the stagger in your car, and you learn how to turn you know, your jacks or your cups to compensate for that. So like, for example, you know, I know that, you know, I can go down one inch on my shackle hole and that will compensate for two inches of stagger on this particular Camaro. It will change car to car. You just about have to put it on the scales, you know, and, and tinker with the car and, and make the changes and kind of learn it. But what if you're in a class where that you don't have weight jacks or you don't have adjustable cups? Well, that's where this right here can really make a difference because I can make some pretty big changes on the front tires of my car and it'll still drive. My setup won't get way off by doing that, but I can drastically change my, my bite in the car without messing up on my stagger or correcting for a change I'm making my stagger. So if I find that I need to, for example, add two more, two more inches of stagger into this rear of this car, then I can turn around and I can say, well, I need to take that two inches out of the front and my bike would stay exactly the same while I also get the benefit of the increased stagger. Now when I go back out on the track and I drive the car again, the difference that I observe driving the car, I'm gonna know that that is just the difference in stagger doing that, that I have not changed my bike. And so I pay attention to how it drives, I pay attention to that change, and I understand it was just stagger doing that, and then that can tell me, did I go in the right direction or the wrong direction, or what next step do I need to take? And so that's why understanding this inverted relationship right here is so important and how that it's affecting your scale numbers and your bite. Because if you're just changing stagger and you're not taking this into account, it's really handicapping you. Hey, I hope y'all like this. I hope this was helpful to you. If you like it, hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment. So this is a suggestion, someone asking me for this detail right here. If you've got something specific you're looking for, put it in the comments and let me know. That's what I'm trying to do here is to empower us to be able to just build better race cars, be better racers, and put on a better show for the public. Grow the sport. Um, and hey, subscribe. Thank y'all.